morning. Um, this presentation and the following presentation are linked, so I'm going to try and confine my talk this morning to just 10 minutes uh, to give uh, Virgil um, the opportunity to talk about the experience of the Bassett Channel project as well as the current data that's coming through. Um, so that's what we're going to be talking about today. Um, but obviously to set the scene, uh, that's, that's my role here this morning. Um, as you know, in 1990, archaeology became a material planning consideration uh, in, in England and uh, across the country, the county archaeologist or the unitary archaeologist provides the planning advice uh, to the local authorities in those areas. Um, in London, that's a little bit different. Um, historic England, through the National Planning Office, um, based in London, um, we provide the archaeological planning advice to the local planning authorities in each of the boroughs of London. Well, my patch is the green, uh, so predominantly the South London boroughs. And here the map shows you the dominant feature being the, obviously the, the Thames uh, and the floodplain. Um, we've been doing a lot of work on the marshes area, over this area of London on the lower Thames. Um, which is, could be a talk for another day. Uh, Greenwich Peninsula in the middle here. A lot of work's been going on there since 2002. Uh, again, that can be another topic, but we're going to be talking about um, the area to the to the west of this of that area today. In terms of planning controls, um, in terms of uh, the planning conditions that we use, we use a multi-part condition. Don't worry about. Uh, the word reading all this. This is just to give you an idea of what a multi part condition consists of, but effectively it's broken down in terms of um, setting out the documentation as to what it is you're going to be doing, then doing the work, and then any ongoing uh, aspects that need to be dealt with, the mitigation stage, the specification for that could be determined, the work is then undertaken. So at the end of the field work stage, the only element you're left with is the final part which is the post, uh, post site work and reporting and deposition of the archive. Um, so you're ticking off the stages of the condition as you go, so that's a multi-part condition. But for geoarchaeology, um, particularly with sites in the lower Thames where you can expect um, archaeology to occur uh, 8, 10, 12 metres down because as times progressed and land has been reclaimed, um, the, the ground is being built up and pushed out into the river. Um, so um, a lot of work in the uh, near Thames side areas uh, is being led by geoarchaeological investigations and the conditions are then being tweaked um, so that you can actually include um, geoarchaeology as a, as a key component. So very much geoarchaeology is, a, is at the centre of the planning control work that we do. So what does the geoarchaeological approach consist of? Obviously collecting and analysing existing data, the curated data that we have, understanding what that t is telling us by generating deposit models, um, and then using that to inform the first stage of geological geo work. Um, often the geotechnical work can be quite scattered, um, so you may want to look at blank areas on the map uh, to f flesh out a bit more detail. Also to investigate um, geotechnical points which have shown odd results or interesting results and we want to target those and then refine your deposit model from that piece of work and then to see whether in fact you might want to be if you've got something particularly interesting happening you might want to then go on to a second stage of geotechnical geoarchaeological work with a series of line bore, bore holes in lines to look at transects across key parts of the site and then to, to refine your deposit model again and then that can then lead on to understanding whether you've got an archaeological potential with certain parts of the site and then undertake the mitigation stage. If your mitigation is through uh, trial trenching, uh, then that can be quite expensive, so you need to be very, very focused on what you're targeting. In terms of today, we're talking about the Bassett Channel area, which is the area further up Thames. Um, on this part of the foreshore, uh, we've got rich archaeology occurring. We've got things like uh, Bronze Age um, Timberhenge. We've got lots of artefacts being deposited in the river. 
and of course the famous uh, uh, Battersea Shield, which is in the British Museum, which uh, was found in this particular part of the Thames. The Mayor's Office has uh, defined a number of areas across London, these are shown in red, um, as growth opportunity areas for massive regeneration. <coughs> and the one we're looking at here is this one here, which is the Vauxhall Nine Elms area. Um, as recently as 2006, um, a site which has been developed um, in this area um, gave an opportunity to investigate um, the interpretation of the relic channel that was part of the Thames at the time um, to understand what the potential of that was for archaeology uh, and produce a sequence of, from the, date, from the uh, site's information um, that really flagged up the potential of the Bassey Channel uh, for archaeological information and in fact it was through this piece of work that the term Bassey Channel was coined. So this is what the Bassey Channel area looked like. Um, this large area to the south, um, Bassey Park is up here against the Thames that's flying through this line here today. So you've got this large area of archaeological potential and geoarchaeological um, uh, buried deposits um, which well, has the potential to uh, transform our understanding of this part of London. This is the, uh, the development area uh, where it has been targeted for regeneration. So uh, taking the archaeological uh, and uh, landscape elements into account, um, undefined an area overlapping a significant part of this regeneration zone uh, for an archaeological project. Um, the red line is the boundary between the Lambeth Borough Council and the Wandsworth um, Planning Authority area. Um, so I wrote a brief outlining a possible project that was responded to by the three archaeological um, practices who are already working within the zone um, with a, a research design method statement and those two documents are then uh, took to the two local authority planning offices to get their support um, and then from that we then had a project to work with. Um, the forum that consists of any archaeological practice that's got a site that they're working on within the zone. So the project design was to run for three years of data collecting and sharing of data um, followed by one year of processing uh, and, and producing the output. Um, the three-year period is coming to an end in February, um, so that will be the time that uh, um, we will then move into the second stage. Um, the HR for London uh, is extensive, uh, and the intention is that the live data set of data points will be housed within that environment so that people can then use that data and add new data to it as, as their, their development sites come through for processing. Um, the programme can also feed into guidance uh, for uh, data collection uh, in, in the field as well as for interpretation of the data that you get from that uh, and that is evolving all the time in terms of how you represent the data. So I took the standard condition um, for planning developments within the zone uh, and tweaked it by including the <coughs> reference to the Bassett Channel project. That then meant that those two documents, uh, the um, brief and the method statement, um, were, then became legal documents in their own right. Uh, so that gave us a, a, a basis on which to move forward. And the three practices that were started uh, three years ago um, have now been joined by many other groups. Um, to show how the regeneration of, of this area has taken off um, and they, they meet something like once every six months um, and the fact that there are this num number of people and organisations involved um, is possibly a measure of, of their interest and support of this project. Um, across the area uh, since 2012 these are the development sites um, that I've been dealing with um, from small sites to, to look quite large sites. Um, so we're looking at about 50, within this zone alone there are about 50 sites 
uh, that we've been dealing with in, plan, in terms of planning control. Um, so a lot of work um, to, to be addressed. Um, and it's been uh, heartening to see that the agricultural practices working in this area um, are not only visiting each other's sites, but are sharing data before it's put into grey literature. Um, so they're exchanging data um, straight away with each other without waiting for uh, formal for publication. Um, so commercial confidentiality within this project uh, isn't, isn't occurring. They're actually sharing data live in the field. Um, and if you walk along um, the Wandsworth Road, which is along this, this eastern side of the zone, um, you can still see the Bassley Channel today, because um, if you glance along the side roads that run off in this direction, um, you'll see the ground actually drops away. So as you move from the gravel um, ridge edge of the channel along which the road is, is situated, uh, the, you'll drop down into what would have been the, 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 the marshy, soggy ground of the Bassett Channel. Um, here you can see some of the developments occurring uh, <coughs> within this part of the site. Um, um, oops, that's it. Um, developments going up all the time. Um, in the middle of there, there's an American embassy being built. Um, and here is an extension to um, the tube network, a railway network for London, a uh, station going in here. So a lot of work, a lot, lot of opportunity, a lot of potential for archaeology, a lot of potential for geoarchaeology. Um, and that's where I hand over to Virgil to talk about the actual data, which is what you want to hear about today. So over to you, Virgil. <laughs>